Welcome to day 12 of the Fearless 30 Challenge. Thanks for being here with me. Today's prompt is what was your biggest failure and how did it shape how, who you are today? And this is something that I'm gonna approach a little bit differently because I don't like the word failure and I really try not to use it in my vocabulary. <laughs> and I try to help other people not use it as well because language is energy and it just kind of grooves in this, this feeling of A, victimhood, um, that we don't have control over things and B, that we are not allowed to or we're not afforded the trials of missteps or trying things out. And so for me, I think the biggest thing uh, I would say the biggest misstep that I ever made um, that taught me something and brought me to where I am today doing the work that I do was that I had a business before this and that was back in the early 2000s. 2002 is when I started it. I had it for almost five years. I had a partner. We ran an art studio that started out in the space of the preschool that we used to teach in and <laughs> we were allowed to use that space for free and run classes for profit uh, one day a week on Saturdays. And that's what we did for about a year. And then we built the business very quickly and built a reputation very quickly, a good reputation, to where we were able to rent a brick and mortar space. And we did that for a year or two, I think it was about two years. And then we grew so much again that we outgrew that space and we were ready to put in a gallery and do shows and connect with the community. and. And we did that. So we went to another space. So we grew very quickly within three and a half, four years. And by the time we got to that space for about a year, we were finding growing pains again. However, we were inexperienced as business people. We didn't know what we were talking about. There wasn't a lot of information available back then. And what there was, we were so busy trying to work with the business and build the business that we didn't take advantage of that. We both had major life events going on. Um, major life events at the end of that that stint that run and I think my biggest misstep was not trusting how powerful and how well the business was doing how good we were at what we were doing because we each brought different skills to the business like I said it was an art community center where we taught classes to all ages we had built this gallery where we brought in artists local artists and um, had them show their work and sell their work and we had you know art shows a couple times a year um, musicians and we decided we made the choice to let it go because of those really kind of tough life things that were going on and very tough life situations for both of us and so rather than kind of pushing through that or asking for help asking for support um, it came to the place where we couldn't even agree on where to go next. So we were growing so fast and so consistently and um, doing a really good thing for the community that we didn't know what to do with that. I look back on it now, we were not prepared for that at all. And instead of getting the assistance and the resources, we let it go. And that was seen as a failure. People actually said to us, well, you failed. And um, to that, I have always said it wasn't a failure. It was our choice to step away. We were not prepared. So it was time where we needed to hire people. We were both spent um, physically and emotionally doing the, the work for this, growing this business, the two of us, and really spending you know, almost seven days a week doing it. So we had no, we were young. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't know where to look. We didn't know where to turn. And we didn't take the time to do that. We didn't value ourselves and how well we were doing and um, our parts in that. And so I think that was my biggest misstep. However, I will not call it a failure. I refuse to call it a failure because it taught me so much about running my own business. It taught me so much about myself. It taught me about asking for help, how important it is to reach out for resources to people who are experienced, who have been where you've been. And at that time, I was surrounded by people who had no idea how to run a business. Um, they had no idea. And so I remember taking a class and that was like so nice, a business class, small business class. And um, that was so nice to be able to have that, you know, and to get us to the next level. And in hindsight, that is not just a one-time thing. That has to happen consistently when you are out in service, especially in service businesses, because you run the tendency of burning yourself out. Um, and so 
you know, not having support as far as like mental health support, not reaching out for that because we thought we had to do it all by ourselves. Um, sorry if this is shaking, I'm holding it today. It's not on a tripod, but yeah. So looking back, I learned a lot about what it means to run a business and what, what self care running a business means, what it looks like. And so now I'm able to approach it very differently. And I've spent the last 10 years kind of trying to hone that and learn more things learning to take care of myself, learning to push through and know my kind of triggers in business and what I need to push through. And I don't even like, really don't even like calling this a business, but spiritual entrepreneurs have a really hard time, I know, calling what they do and, and receiving an exchange in the form of money. They have a hard time calling it a business, but it is, it is because it's a livelihood, but it's just a livelihood that doesn't feel like work. So, that's one of my biggest takeaways from that miscalculation and that misstep. Oh, and the other piece of that was it took me years. I never saw it as a failure, but I felt it as a failure. I felt the energy of other people. I mean, people literally said it to directly to us. <laughs> so, and I took that on, I took that energy on. I, I felt that at a very deep level and it took a long time to release that and clear that out. And so now I understand that that was a lesson of really standing in my power all the time, no matter what anybody else thinks, um, and to keep going and to trust my instincts, trust my intuition, trust my ability to see the pieces that fit and how they work in order to make this a livelihood for myself and to make any business a livelihood and to really trust that that connection, because that was a big piece of what we did, connecting people in the community and really holding space for people in the community, especially young artists, kids who really wanted to be artists, um, holding space for them and having that enthusiasm for them. It's kind of like what I do now, holding space for people who know they can be in a different place, especially creatives, spiritual creatives, or people struggling with disease. And I'll talk a little bit about, about that more probably down the line, but I think the biggest misstep for me labeled as a failure, but not seen by myself as a failure, was learning how to really push through and stay resilient and stay consistent and stay persistent and develop the tenacity and just keep going and going and going 10 years later, 20 years later, I let that business go in 2006, <laughs> it's a long time ago, um, all those years refining what it means to be in service and to build this heart-based business and exchange with people um, and help them to do the same and to grow and expand. So that's my biggest takeaway. I think I've just developed a lot of skills along the way because of that misstep, because of that miscalculation, because of letting something go that I probably shouldn't have let it go. Um, but here I am today, I've had a beautiful trajectory. It's not been easy, but I've learned so much and I've grown and expanded spaces I would never ever imagine I would be. I did not imagine I would ever be here, ever. So I'm very grateful for that. And I'm grateful for you following along for this challenge. I've been a little bit lapsing between days. Um, life is happening and so I'm allowing it to happen. And, uh, but I will get through Every day you will see 30 videos. So this is day 12 and um, 13, 14, and 15 are coming up as well. Thanks everyone. I'll see you on the next one.